Hello. Hello. Uh, here today, I met him a few years ago at uh, a mutual friend's pie day party uh, in Oakland. And yes, we ate lots of pie. So I'm used to eating. That's yeah. <laughs> And uh, he lives in Wisconsin, and so we've had a back and forth about having him come here and do a brown bag, because he has many uh, vocal talents, which you will soon see. Do you have the hat? Uh, that work? You, if, if you want the hat. Did you meet me in the hat? Yeah. She met me in the hat. So I met, met him in the hat, and I saw him today, and he was like smiling at me. I was like, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lady. So well, we'll take it from here. There. Hello. So you can give him a little introduction too. Okay, a little introduction too. So this is my card. Yes. Okay, good. Hi. Um, IDB, and well, I, I just found I've got my ID from Stanford when I was in paramedic school. It says DB Pedersen. I chose it as a stage name, but I guess I've been using it for years. Uh, Valeo, born and raised, lived in Oakland. Yada yada. Flew off to Wisconsin um, 21 years ago, and uh, and uh, what did I do? Uh, oh, he's working. Uh, hold on, let's back up. I as Gerald McBoing Boing, uh, Jules Pfeiffer, cartoon little kid in the six about a little kid in the 60s who all he did was open up his head and noises would come out, and I was basically that kid. You know, I just imitated everything on the TV, everything I heard. Yada yada. In my mouth, I had a very strange childhood and, and didn't go off into voiceover and acting and all that stuff. But I moved to Wisconsin and uh, started doing this thing through a little spiritual work with trying to find my father, in which I learned or taught myself the art of uh, throat singing. I didn't know what I was doing, but I used to play the didgeridoo. I don't have a formal music education. But I was uh, hollering one day and my voice broke. Ooh, ooh. It sounded more like, and it hurt like hell, but I split the note and could hear it. for a year, but it was really cool, so I just kept doing it. Uh, I was working on a sheep farm, um, like you do. Um, I went out on the first day of lambing, April, so this is uh, 17 years ago. Uh, the first day of lambing, the farmer took me out, and he showed me a group of sheep, and he said, okay, there's the ewes, and they're going to walk away from the, um, the pack, and they're going to have their lambs, and they're going to walk back there and eat. You're going to run up in the field with your little toolkit. I've been a paramedic years ago, so now I'm like a farm paramedic. So you're going to find a bunch of gasping little lambs, and uh, they've got 20 minutes to live, so beat the clock. And uh, here's, you know, if you look at a lamb, it's got this pile of baby lambs. If you look at this lamb, it's got a little Frisian and a Finn Rambouillet, and it's kind of this way with its face, and you look over and pick out who in the, who in the crowd might have had these babies, and I'm like, what? No, or whatever. He's like, I gotta go. See you in a few hours. Don't let any die. He drives away in the truck. And because of my mimesis and my paranoia, it's like, oh my god, you know, they're all gonna die in the field. I tried to figure out what to do, and I picked up a little lamb and I shook it. It's a longer sort of story than that. I pick up a little.